Hey, this is Roz, and you're about to watch a video on pixel art. Uh, this room that I'm making for my game Dungeon Marauder, it's uh, the pixel art game that I've been working on for a while, and I wanted to stream myself um, trying to kind of finish up this room. I only started blocking it out a while ago um, just to figure out some gameplay aspects, and now I'm uh, committing to kind of polishing everything and as you can see there's only just some block outs and some shapes that I wanted the player you know to have to go around through and they need to get from where they are right here by the bed uh, and I can uh, draw on top of that so you can see that better um, so they need to start over here and they need to end up at the door here and um, I'm now going to start uh, polishing each one of the pieces you see here and kind of defining the walls and the uh, rest of the furniture that's that's visible in the space. Um, and as you can see I had already started on the floor a little bit so I had done some detailing on that. Uh, I may or may not change that and I might add additional carpeting and uh, other kind of things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, so you might hear me clicking. Uh, I'm also, I'm doing all of this from my iPad uh, with my Apple Pencil and at the same time, I'm using uh, my computer to kind of look at some reference and figure out um, what I'm trying to do with each piece. And um, I can't figure out how to show the cursor of where my pencil is on uh, the iPad. I think there's a sec uh, accessibility setting that does that, but I haven't, I haven't put enough time into it to figure it out. Uh, but in any case, you should be able to see where I'm drawing, so at least there's that. Um, and I'm going to start um, making this piece right here into a kind of a bookcase. And I have some reference from some other games that I like that kind of give the impression that I'm trying to go for. Um, and this is probably going to have a few compartments. Um, and then the one on the right is probably more of a traditional bookcase where there's going to be a lot of books. Um, well, let's get into it, and uh, as you can see I also have a character here for reference, uh, that's the main character in my game and it's just for size and reference. Uh, I probably don't need it anymore at this point since I already have the layout, but I still want to be able to see it. Um, there's a few layers that I had already set up uh, from the last time I was doing this, and I think the most important one is this grid. Uh, just because it helps me figure out how big everything is. Uh, so I usually put this on top and try to figure out if I'm doing the right sizing for everything. Uh, so this is almost more important than my character. But Alright, enough talking. I'm gonna start doing some drawing. And I don't think I'm happy with these colors, so I'm gonna think about toning these down a little bit. I want this brown to probably be less saturated and slightly lighter. Let's see how that works out. Oh, and I'm on the wrong layer. Um, okay, so this is the layer that I want to be working on. Yeah, that's significantly better with what I'm trying to do. I'm probably still going to have to tweak these colors once I figure out what the colors of the walls are and because they're definitely not green um, yeah, and then I imagine there's some sort of light on top in this room that lights everything from above um, and probably some wall lights that those will be uh, real-time lights or at least bake lights in the game engine in Unity so for now, I'm just going to make this just subtly lighter, so that, that went a little bit too far. Okay, that's not far enough. And usually that's how I do it, I experiment a little bit. Um, I see one of the references that I'm looking at has a nice uh, groove on the side, so I think I'm going to try to replicate that. But before I do that, I need to zoom in a little bit and probably... Um, start hiding all the layers that are behind and this might take a little bit but I want to be able to see the the grid that uh, the app provides Pixaki and then also the grid that I made um, 
I'm probably going between those because this original grid shows me the size of one pixel. Um, yeah, I'm drawing all the wrong layer again. So this shows me the size of one pixel, and I can you know easily figure out how many pixels I have to work with. Um, and then my grid, you know, like I said, it gives me a reference for scale. So I'm going to grab this color, make it slightly lighter, and I want to draw an edge on the side, maybe about three pixels wide. Uh, kind of block that out. Um, and uh, at the same time, I'm going to switch to the rectangle tool and then cover it up on the other side. And then pick up that color, lighten that up a little bit. And all this is, you know, eyeballing it. I, I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about the details right now because I'm just trying to lay down the shapes. I could be doing this in grayscale, but it's just nicer to do it in color. Um, just laying up the values and then I can f then tweak the actual hues when it's in the environment with the other things. Uh, plus the lighting will wash everything out anyway, so I have that as well. Um, and then maybe another little groove that's smaller and darker here at the bottom. Yeah, maybe smaller. Alright, and I imagine this would have another one. I'm gonna make it on another layer just because I can't necessarily eyeball the middle just now. So, oh have to figure that out later. Uh, it's about three wide. Move it slightly. That's about the middle. I think actually this is uh, an odd number of pixels so I probably can't get it in the middle but actually that looks about right. So I'm happy with that. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, same thing here. I'll just use the pencil for that. That looks pretty good. I might actually try, uh, try to add a little bit more detail and maybe add a little bit of highlight here. I'll actually go very high in that and lower the opacity a bit. Just so it looks like it has a little bit of curvature there. Um, Bake that down. And I usually keep baking the layers uh, just because I'm not trying to keep the history of what I'm doing here. Um, I like to keep drawing on top of the pixel art. I usually don't do this with other types of digital art just because I need that history, but here I'm usually working on one object or one layer per object. Um, and the next thing is I'll probably cast some shadows from the, those edges on the inside. Uh, but before I do that, I still need to break up the space a little bit more because I wanted to uh, I wanted to have one big shelf in the middle or actually one at the bottom and then uh, two on top that are smaller. Uh, one bigger one at the bottom. So I'm gonna take this color again, figure out the lighter version of it and probably split it up about here. and then remove that because this is what I was talking about. I want this to be a single piece. And then here, two more. Cool. And this is starting to hurt my eyes a little bit so I think I'm gonna put a grid behind it again just so it's slightly darker. Uh, I'll just disable this. There you go, it's something better to look at. But, um, right, now I'm going to figure out I have the right shelves in place. Um, I need to give, I want this to be a shelf, this top part uh, to be a shelf in itself. Uh, and then I'm gonna give this a little bit of shine, um, which will, on the wrong layer again. Um, is further at the top so I'm gonna make it significantly lighter 
and see now right now it kind of blends in with the side edges but once I add a little bit of shadowing in there it's not gonna be the case anymore I'm also gonna lower the opacity a bit just so it's more in tune with the rest of the furniture um, cool and I need a little bit of depth on each one of these so I'm gonna get this color and even though you're probably not going to be able to see, as the player, not going to be able to see the how deep. not my actual drawing um, but I'm back in now hopefully that's a smooth transition um, I'm gonna continue drawing the pieces to give it some depth and then go all the way to the edge um, and actually I'm gonna undo that because I should have done that on a separate layer so I can independently control the um, uh, Brightness, that's the word. That's pretty good. And here, it will probably be about this much. That's actually a little bit too much. Okay. Alright. Um, and I should move it to the side so I can actually see what I'm doing. I might go darker later, but I'll keep that on a separate layer for now and probably start introducing some shadows. And I think for this, um, you know, so I want to remove this interior, actually, use the pencil, remove this interior part. Um, that way, the top is cleaner and we still have that separator everywhere else. Uh, so I'm going to take a really dark brown put this on a separate layer take a really dark brown and do a little bit of self shadowing around and we'll see it might be too much uh, I can always erase some of it. That's definitely too much on this side. And over there where the two parts meet. Uh, and just to give you a preview of what I'm trying to do, is that when I make that slightly less dark, Yeah, actually, I will want to do that with the, on a different layer, with that part. Probably go double at the top and more consistent. Yeah, that looks significantly better. Alright, do the same thing here. Two lines, and I'll keep that one simpler for now. And same thing here. Uh, 
kind of a little bit of noise here. But... Okay, and sometimes you know I make mistakes, and because my the palm rejection doesn't always work perfectly, you end up with random pixels on the canvas. I try to clean them up. You could usually just do a marquee selection and delete them all, like like this, but like this, and then cut it. Um, so I, I, that could wait until the end as well. But I actually, uh, the more I look at this, I think I'd like this to be on a separate layer just so I can control that opacity a bit more and just make it uh, significantly less dark just because it's at the top and it's probably getting hit by the light directly <clears throat> sorry I'm losing my voice um, oh and I forgot I forgot a line here Okay, a few other things I want to do just before I start adding um, the books into the, this bookcase. Uh, since that will occlude a lot of what's happening in the, uh, behind it, I don't want to spend too much detailing all those shadows. But I do want to start adding some edge highlights and see what that might look like. Uh, and those will be a little bit more saturated and definitely brighter. Um, so you know, I mentioned that, that I wanted this part to look a little round um, then actually I forgot I need some self shadowing around other places too but let's just focus on some highlights for now and this is uniform right now but that's alright uh, actually yeah those shouldn't be like that just yet uh, add a little bit on the sides here it shouldn't be symmetrical and it be slightly different on the other side maybe a little bit here a little bit here a little bit over here just some slight edge highlights as if you know it's been used I think I went over my shadow area there you go um, do want to go add another layer of shadows pick up this dark color uh, and add a little bit over here because these are inset compared to the rest what I was doing last was I was uh, drawing some additional uh, darkened edges on the sides here uh, just to add some shadows to um, these wood planks that support uh, that the shelves basically um, just so they look like they're inset compared to the rest uh, and potentially I'm gonna go slightly thicker here so that it's clearly a different piece of wood. You know, this is a static prop in the, in the environment so it doesn't matter very much, but I just wanted to have the right feel. And um, because of it, I can go a bit darker on the pieces that are underneath it so let's try that out yeah that's better this sticks out a little bit more and I want I'm gonna start merging some of these because I can always adjust the whole thing afterwards And I'm gonna add just a little bit more shadow over here as well. Okay, starting to like what that looks like. I'm gonna continue with some highlights. So as you can see, you know, I, for most of these edges, I only have about three pixels worth of width to work with. So I'm trying to do to make the best of that, uh, or actually even just two here on this edge, 
Uh, so it can't be it can't be too uh, intense in the difference in highlights because it will stick out. But it could be sufficient so that it looks like you know that edge has been scraped a little bit. Um, and then you know I I tone it down and see what it looks like. Maybe from afar, yeah. And about game scale, which is more or less this view. It actually looks pretty good. Um, I will add again. A lot of this will be hidden by books, so I'm trying to not spend too much time on it. But we'll see how many books I actually end up adding. Um, this could go slightly darker, just because it's the crevice at the back. Um, it's okay if it spills a little bit. I'll oh, clean that up. And I'll do that everywhere because um, I want them to be even though I'll probably end up putting a gradient a vertical gradient just so it's slightly lighter at the top I want to still have them to start with have them the same uh, have them be the same values all right it's not bad um, so this space here, you know, I left it empty so that uh, I can put books on the top shelves, but on this bottom one I'm probably going to put some of the uh, other pieces of furniture, or not furniture, just props that I had made before, like a vase or something like that. And actually, just to demonstrate that, I'm going to go in one of my other folders um, and grab one of the vases vases <laughs> um, that I drawn or maybe some of these jars these jars might be perfect for the, the situation let's do a copy paste of this uh, why does the character have jars in the room oh I'll, I'll figure out how to put that as part of the story that's the wrong folder and I'm in the castle room that's the one I'm working in right now and Let's paste that. Perfect. Yeah, these actually might be very good for this. Uh, and I'll edit them, you know, to fit in here. But I might put two of the red ones, maybe. One of the red ones, one of the yellow ones. Hmm. Let's crop this on a different layer for now. Put it to the side and make it invisible. So I can work with just one. I just made a new animation layer. I'll do that. Uh, so now I need to make this seem smaller. So I'm just gonna move the liquid a little bit, move the top, and this kind of looks like it fits to me. Uh, I'll put it slightly deeper and then crop the top where the edge would hit it. Yeah, actually, go even deeper. Because if you look at the circumference, it probably sit. Yeah, maybe that actually that looks about right. And I want the top to cast a shadow on this. Um, probably should have made it in a gradient so that it's slightly darker here and then slightly lighter here uh, actually I can go full black on this one and then tone it down okay yeah I'm, I'm okay with this for now oh move the shadow that's not what I want I want to merge that and I want to move the whole jar slightly to the side um, and then probably on the layer underneath it just in case I change my mind uh, in a little bit I'm gonna go with a really dark brown as well and probably add some shadow some contact shadow some ambient occlusion I 
could go all around, but let's see how that looks. Um, not the right color for this.
hey, if you enjoyed the content, leave a message below, like, and subscribe.